Hello everyone, this is Dr. Akif Beg. Today we'll be talking about P waves in ECG. So before going to the actual topic P wave, we should know what is the normal axis of the heart and how the axis of the heart is aligned. So see, because the main majority of the part of the heart is formed by the left ventricle, uh, because the workload by workload on the left ventricle is the highest. So whatever the load which is there on the left ventricle, the majority of the axis of the heart, the major axis of the heart actually is directed towards the left ventricle and it's towards the apex. So before understanding that, you should know that key pacemaker. What is SA node is our main pacemaker of the heart. So electrical activity starts from the SA node and from this SA node, the electrical activity goes from SA node to the AV node. So current will pass from SA node to the AV node in this direction and then from the AV node to the bundle of phase and then Purkinje fibers goes downward through this. So since left ventricle is the majority of the heart and the normal axis of the heart is directed towards the left ventricle, towards the lateral and apex of the heart. So all the electrical activity which is going towards the direction of the axis, towards the axis, the axis of the heart will come as a positive deflection. So as well as the electrodes which we keep on our uh, body while taking the ECGs is also is directed downwards and towards the apex of the heart. So all the vectors going towards the apex of the heart will have a positive deflection and the rest which is going against opposite direction like if it is the vector is not going from here to here and it is going from here to here back. So in the reverse direction then it will be have a negative deflection. What is a P wave? P wave is the first positive deflection uh, because uh, it denotes the atrial depolarization. So atrial contraction is denoted by this uh, P wave. P wave arises from the atrial contraction. So and it is started because of electrical activity which is going from SA node to AV node. So which is in the direction of the apex, and that's why it is a positive deflection in all the lids except for AVR. Uh, the normal duration of the P wave is less than 0.12 seconds. That is less than three small squares. Each small square is a 40 milliseconds. So less than three small squares. So this, the big one is a large square and here within that there are five small squares. So this is totally less than three small squares. What are the characteristics of a normal P wave is? The P wave is normally is in smooth counter. So it's smooth, what do you mean by smooth is? You can see the, uh, the normal uh, P wave. So it is not pointed, it is mostly smooth counter. And it is monophasic in lead. In all the leads, it is basically monophasic. Monophasic means it is only single, in only in one direction. Whereas in lead V1, if you talk about the lead V1, it is generally biphasic. So this is in the lead V1, you can see uh, it's the, this is the first part and the second part. So the first part is denotes the right atrial contraction and the second part is the left atrial contraction. So it's a biphasic in lead V1. <clears throat> and the duration as we've already discussed is less than 0.12 seconds or less than three small squares. And the amplitude. So what do you mean by amplitude? Amplitude is nothing but at the height of the uh, P wave. Normally, it should be less than 2.5 millimeters in the limb leads and less than 1.5 millimeters in the precordial leads. So what do you mean by precordial leads? Precordial leads is nothing but V1 to V6, and the limb leads is nothing but the lead 1, 2, 3, AVL, AVR, and AVF. So less than 2.5 millimeters, less than 1 millimeter. So normally, all the after abnormalities, if you have to study, it has to be seen in inferior leads, that is a lead 2, 3, AVF, and lead V1, as these waves are the most prominent. Normal P wave morphology in talking about let's go to the lead two. So lead two normal P wave morphology is like this. Uh, so as you have already said, the P wave is less than 120 milliseconds wide, and that is less than three millimeters or three small squares. And the height is normally is less than 2.5 millimeters or less than two and a half small squares. And the see the atrial contraction actually starts from the right atrium because SA node normally lies in the right atrium. So initially right atrium will contract and followed by which is left atrial contraction. So first half of the wave denotes right atrium which is generated by this red line. And the second half is basically because of the left atrium, the third, last, last later half. In between there is a mark of uh, our zone of uh, intermediate where there is involvement of the bore, right, both the right atrium and the left atrium. Similarly in the uh, lead V1, this is biphasic. So initial half is the right atrial contraction. The second half is the left atrial contraction. So let's talk about the inverted P waves. So where do you see inverted P waves? So as we've already discussed that if your SA node is functioning, SA node will go take current from, from SA node to AV node that is towards the direction of the axis of the heart. And that's why there will be positive deflection. So if there is negative deflection, that means your SA node is not functioning properly. So there is a defect in SA node. So what happens is that then the pacemaker could be either in the AV node 
or it could be some ectopic foci which is acting as a pacemaker so if we not so if the ev node is assume ev node is your pacemaker the current the whole for whole atria to contract ev node will now pass current in the direction from here to apex towards this direction in this direction that is away from the main axis of the heart so main axis is towards this direction and if the ev node is towards this opposite so that's why there will be a presence of negative deflection which you can see here is a negative deflection so now how will you differentiate whether this negative deflection is because of the defect uh, because the pacemaker is either av node or ectopic foci so see if your uh, node is if your uh, pacemaker is av node so av node is the one which is uh, uh, which is little bit faster so this av node uh, will pass current uh, very faster to the like see uh, for this important thing is that av node will denote pr interval so Uh, the time take from uh, pr interval is basically the time taken for the current to go from the atria to the ventricle this phase so if since av node is very much closer to this part of the ventricle so pr interval is generally short in this one whereas if the ectopic foci is acting as a pacemaker so this will take some more longer time because it is has no coordination activity it will take some more longer time to reach from here to the ventricle so pr interval will be long So, if PR interval is less than 120 milliseconds, then it, uh, origin of uh, origin is found to be AV junction. That is AV node, and is also called as accelerated junction rhythm. If the PR interval, that is the initial of P wave to end of the uh, to beginning of the QRS, uh, is more than 120 seconds, then the it is called as ectopic atrial rhythm, or the pacemaker is ectopic foci, not the AV node. What is multifocal atrial rhythm? multifocal atrial rhythm is that in, in any ecg if you find more than three different types of morphology of the p wave then it is called as multifocal atrial rhythm you can see here one morphology of p wave. this is your p wave then this is your p wave is a small bifid one and this is a bifid so all those three p waves are of not of same morphology but of three different morphology and that's why it is called as multifocal atrial rhythm so if there is multifocal atrial rhythm and if the heart rate is more than 100 then it is called as multifocal atrial tachycardia this is characteristically seen in copd patients and it has carries very poor prognosis now this right atrial enlargement so how do you the uh, p wave in a right atrial enlargement so as i assume if as i told you already the initial half is because of right atrium and the later half is because of left atrium so since your left atrium is uh, normal the duration remains normal because the left atrium will contract in that same amount of time uh, as it takes normally so the duration will be normal but the as the right atrium is very much enlarged so right atrium will keep contracting 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 and the uh, then left atrium atrium also will start contracting but the right atrium will still contracting so it will just go above the left atrium and lands here so there will be the height of the p wave will get elevated or it, the height of p wave will be more than 2 and 1/2 mm okay but the width remains unchanged so that is a classical of right atrial enlargement so ecg criteria similarly more than 2 and 1/2 mm 2.5 mm in the inferior leads that is in the limb leads and more than 1.5 mm in the v1 so here we can see normal this is the normal p wave in the lead two and in the v1 is normal that is the initial right atrial enlargement and the left atrial so initial right atrium contraction and the left atrium contraction so in case of right atrial enlargement as i said the duration will remain same but the height of the p wave of the right atrium is large so there will be p pulmonary okay in v1 also the first half is because the first half denotes the uh, first half denotes the right atrium contraction the right atrium contraction height will be peaked that is more than 1.5 mm here what are the cause of right atrial enlargement uh, we know any cause of uh, pulmonary hypotension will lead to right atrial enlargement you can see here again the ecg showing right atrial enlargement the pulmonary the p here has around almost four small squares in the inferior leads that is more than 4 mm this is around 4 mm that is more than 2.5 mm and thus fits into the criteria of the right atrial enlargement similarly in the lead v1 you can see the height of the, the first positive wave is more than 1 and 1/2 mm 1.5 mm it's around 3 mm almost so it also denotes right atrial enlargement left atrial enlargement so left atrium denotes the second half of the p wave and it is commonly seen in case of atrial fibrillation and mitral stenosis and that's why it is also called as mitral mitral okay so the right atrium will contract and then it will go down normally and then there will be a gap which will coming out because the left atrium is contracting uh, for a longer time when the right atrium already stopped 
so there will be a bifid gap and the left because the second half is basically because of left atrium so left atrium will not take a longer time to contract because of its enlargement and thus the duration gets prolonged the duration of the pv will be now more than 120 milliseconds so you can see here so normal right atrial enlargement and the left atrial enlargement so right atrial enlargement the duration remains same left atrial enlargement, the duration gets prolonged and you can also see the second half is getting more prolonged that it should be more than 40 milliseconds so the criteria what they have given for left atrial enlargement is that there should be bifid p wave you can see and the distance the total p wave duration should be more than 120 110 milliseconds that is uh, because the p is prolonged because of left atrial enlargement and the you can see two tips here the first half first tip is because of the right atrial and the second half that is you can see here so this is the, so this is the first half is because of the right atrium contraction and the second half is because of left atrial contraction so the distance between this peak and this peak should be more than 40 milliseconds Let's talk about in V1. If you talk about in V1, the first half, as I said, the first positive one is basically because of right atrial contraction. The second half is because of left atrial contraction. So the second half basically denotes the left atrial enlargement if it is more than one mm deep. That is more than one mm deep, or if it is the duration is more than 40 milliseconds, that is more than one millimeter, then it denotes what is called as left atrial contraction. Also, left atrial uh, hypertrophy is uh, most commonly is mitral stenosis, the classical test. And any causes, any association with left ventricle hypertrophy can also cause left atrial enlargement. Let's talk about biatrial enlargement. The biatrial enlargement will have both the features of the left as well as the right atrial enlargement. So you can see here right atrial enlargement criteria, which we have already said, that is the P wave should be uh, heightened here. The, the, the height of the P wave will be more than 2.5, and also the duration will be prolonged. So in V1, if you see uh, the height of the P, the initial half, that is right atrial enlargement, denotes and it will be more than 1.5 and the duration of the second wave will be more than 40 milliseconds or more than one millimeters deep. So these are both criteria of right and left enlargement, which is seen in this uh, ECG criteria for bilateral enlargement. You can see here in this ECG, there is a P wave enlargement in the lead to P wave is more than one, more than 2.5 millimeters. And also there is a duration of the P wave is, uh, that is the negative deflection is also more than one mm deep and wide in bilateral enlargement. So the reference for all, uh, this uh, ECG video is basically litfl.com, uh, which is a very good site for uh, learning ECGs. Second is the Brown World Textbook of Cardiology, and third is the Harrison's 20th edition. Hope you have liked my video. If you have any queries on this topic, or if you want me to tell, take a class in any other topic of medicine, cardiology, please let me know. If you have uh, liked my video, do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akiv Beck, for more interesting videos. Thank you.